Happy Sabbath, church family. As we dive into the word this morning, let us bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, God, we simply ask for your Holy Spirit to guide us as we dive into your word. And through your word, help us all to find hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. With everything that's happening in our world today, with everything that's happening in our nation today, with everything that is happening in the lives of our church family today, and also in our own personal lives today, this morning I want to simply share a message of hope. Amen? A message about the one who can take you out of the darkness and into the light. So I want us to take a look at several accounts in the Bible where darkness turned into light where the situation seems so hopeless and very grim, very lonesome, and filled with so much sorrow. But by the grace and the awesome power of God, it turned into something incredible and amazing. And one of the accounts comes from the story of Exodus. So when the Israelites were delivered from the, the bondage of slavery in Egypt, it was in the middle of the night so please open your Bibles with me to Exodus chapter 12, verses 6 to 8. Exodus chapter 12, verses 6 through 8. And the word of God says, Now you shall keep it unto until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it at twilight. And they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the upper doorposts of the houses where they eat it. Then they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Now, as you know, God appointed Moses to deliver his people from slavery in Egypt. And so Moses goes over to the, to the palace and passionately and earnestly petitions Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, to free his people, crying out, let my people go. But Pharaoh did not listen to Moses, not only once, twice, or three times, but he refused to listen to him nine times. So God brought down the 10th plague upon the land of Egypt, and this plague was plague of all plagues. And this plague consisted of God striking down all of the firstborn in the middle of the night. And this plague not only struck the firstborn son of Pharaoh, but the Bible states that it struck every firstborn in Egypt and all the firstborn of the beasts. So God commanded each and every Israelite household to slaughter a lamb and put the blood on the top and the two sides of the door entrance. And not only that, the man of the house had to make sure that every individual in the household was present and together. So the man of the household went to the back of the house to, and got the lamb and, got, and out of the pen and slew it and got the blood into the bowl and took the bowl and perhaps the stepping ladder to the front of the house. Then he took the bowl and began to cover the top and two sides of the door entrance with that blood. After completing that task of covering the doorposts, with blood, he had to make sure that every person in the household, among, along with the animals, were at home. And then they had to gather together in one room, perhaps in the living space or the dining room, as they held each other's hands, as Ellen White states, then they waited for the judgment of God to fall upon the land and spend time in prayer and supplication. And God promised that when he begins to strike down the firstborn, those houses with the blood of the lamb will be passed by or passed over, and the firstborn of the house, along with the firstborn cattle and animals, will be spared. 
This is because the Lamb's blood represented the blood of Jesus, amen, that was going to be shed on the cross. And those household that was covered in the blood was guaranteed total safety. This is why, my friends, we need to be covered in the blood, amen? We need to ask God for the covering of the blood each and every day of our lives. We need the covering of the blood daily as we live in the world that is surrounded by so much wickedness and so much evilness, so much darkness around us. And so going back to the story, on that day, as the sun began to set and night began to fall, the judgment of God was literally at the door. Now, imagine with me, what would you do if you were there with the Israelites? That night was not an ordinary night. That night was one of the darkest nights recorded in the history of mankind. That night was a night full of sadness, pain, and despair. That night was a night where, where many were in fear of unknown. And that night seemed like a night where no morning light was in sight. So as we look at Exodus chapter 12, verses 29 and 30, please open your Bibles with me and go there with me. So it says, And it came to pass at midnight that the Lord struck all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on his throne, to the firstborn of the captive who was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of livestock. So Pharaoh rose in the night, he all, his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, and for there was not a house where there was not one dead. This passage begins with the words, at midnight. This unthinkable tra tragedy happened in the night. In the book, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 278, Ellen White, one of my favorite authors, says, and I quote, the token of blood must be placed upon their houses and they must separate themselves and their families from Egyptians and gather within their own dwellings. Had the Israelites disregarded in any particular direction given them, had they neglected to separate their children from the Egyptians, had they slain the lamb but failed to strike the doorpost with blood, or had any gone out of their houses, they would not have been secure. Furthermore, Ellen White goes on to say that the Israelites obeyed the direction that God has given swiftly and secretly. They made their preparation for departure. Their families were gathered, the Paschal lamb slain, the flesh roasted with fire, unleavened bread and bitter herbs prepared. The father and the priest of the household sprinkled the blood upon the doorpost, joined his family within this dwelling. In haste and silence, the Paschal lamb was eaten. In awe, the people prayed and watched the heart of the eldest born from the strong man down to the little child, throbbing with indefinable dread. Fathers and mothers clasped in their arms in their love, firstborn as they threw of their fearful stroke that was to fall that night. You see, this tragedy all happened during the night. However, for those who put the blood of the lamb on, it, on its doorpost, that dark night turned into bright and glorious morning. And so the Bible says in Exodus chapter 12, verses 31 to 32, then he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, rise, go out from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go serve the Lord as you have said. And also take your flocks and your herbs, as you have said, and be gone and bless me also. You see, during that night, during that dark, grim, tragic night, God's people saw the bright light, that the glorious morning. There was light in the midst of the darkness. When darkness surrounded them, they saw 
the light because the light was given to them. Now, there's another record in the Bible where a grim, hopeless night turned into something incredible. When the Israelites again left Egypt after several days, they came to this place called the Red Sea. And before their eyes, they saw the vast sea, and behind them were Pharaoh and his vast army. Israelites were completely trapped, and as they realized their dire situation, they stopped their footsteps, and the Bible said they murmured to Moses, and ultimately to God, who brought them out of Egypt. But Moses said to his people, as it is written in Exodus chapter 14, verses 13 to 14, and please go there, go there with me, as the Bible says, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. You see, when you are, when we are trapped from all sides and we don't know what to do, just remember that the moment in time becomes a perfect opportunity, perfect timing for God to step in. Amen? So I have a question. When do you become very serious and passionate about prayer and devotion to God? When is it that your time with God every day stops from being just a formality, just a routine, and becomes so real and meaningful to you? When do you really pour your heart out to God in prayer and supplication? When is it that you cry out to God and truly cast your cares upon God? him. I know that many of us get really serious about praying passionately and wholeheartedly when we are up against some situation where we feel there is no way out. When we are up against something, when we are up against some stuff that we know we cannot handle with our own wisdom, power, ability, and strength, that's when we get really serious. I mean, when our world suddenly turns into total darkness, we cry out to God, Oh God, please help me. Oh God, have mercy upon me. Oh God, please save me. Oh God, I need you and I need you now. That is why I believe that when trials and difficulties comes our way, when we experience pain and agony that we cannot bear, when the storm hits our world and darkness surrounds us, that moment in time becomes a perfect chance, a perfect opportunity for us to set our sights on Jesus. Instead of focusing our sights on trouble in front of us and trouble in left and right of us and trouble behind us, we must, again, we must, Focus our sights on our deliverer, the one who can turn our night into bright and glorious morning. Amen? So just remember that when you face the problem in your life, those problems are like an alarm clock going off saying, James, it's time, it's time to wake up and look up. When troubles and difficulties knocks at your door, don't be so quick to open the door and be overwhelmed by the magnitude of the problems and difficulties, but keep the door shut and drop down on your knees and look towards heaven first. Look towards the one who is our deliverer, who is our refuge, and who is our savior. So the people of Israel, when they were trapped, trapped from all sides, they complained to Moses and to God. But they finally followed and obeyed the command of the Lord and marched forward as the sea parted. And guess what? This too happened during the night. 
Let's look at Exodus chapter 24, I mean Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. Exodus chapter 14, verses 21 and 22. So it says, Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, and the waters were all wall, wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Then the passage goes on to say in verses 23 and 24, And the Egyptians pursued and went after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. Now it came to pass in the morning watch, in other words, the last watch of the night, that the Lord looked down upon the army of Egyptians through the pillar of fire and cloud, and he troubled the army of Egyptians. Going down to verses 27 to 30, and it reads, And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and when the morning appeared, in other words, at the crack of dawn, the sea returned to its full depth, while Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. Then the waters returned, covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the army of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them, not so much as one of them remained. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall to them on their right and on their left. So the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. When the people of Israel saw the sea part, as God made a way out of no way, literally, as God delivered them from Pharaoh's vast army, it was during the night when Israelites were trapped from all sides and they were, there was no way out, when total darkness surrounded them, that was when God reached out and delivered them with his righteous right hand. Right at the last watch of the night, Right at the crack of dawn, God stepped in and God delivered them out of darkness. You know, speaking of nights, there is without a doubt the darkest night recorded in the Bible. William Barclay, a New Testament scholar, states that this particular night was the darkest night in the history of humankind. This night, I say, this night was the darkest night in the history of human being. That night was the night when Jesus cried out, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch with me. That night was the night when Jesus needed all the support and encouragement that he could get, but was left alone by his disciples three times. That night was the night when one of Jesus' disciples approached Jesus and kissed his cheek with that sign, and he was arrested by mob, and every disciple fled the scene and left him all alone. That night was the night when Jesus was taken away to be trialed and his number one disciple dis denied him not only once, not only twice, but three times. That night was the night when Jesus was criti criticized and ridiculed and falsely accused, beaten and was spit upon by his own people. Then Friday morning came. But that day was full of darkness still. And in that darkness, Jesus was whipped almost to death. And in that darkness, they placed the crown of thorn on his forehead. And in that darkness, he carried and dragged that cross to the place called Golgotha. And in that darkness, he was stripped down and nails were driven into his hands and feet. 
and in that darkness, he was crucified. On that day, Jesus indeed experienced the ultimate darkness. And before he gave out his last breath, he cried out in a total darkness, in total despair, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And as we go to Luke chapter 23, verses 44 to 46, the word of God says, now it was about the sixth hour and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. Then Jesus was chained in that tomb from Friday evening to the night right before the first day of the week. Then Ellen White in the book Desire of Ages, page 780 says, the night of the first day of the week had worn slowly away the darkest hour just before daybreak had come. Christ was still a prisoner in his narrow tomb. The great stone was in its place. The Roman seal was unbroken. The Roman guards were keeping their watch. And there were unseen watchers. Hosts of evil angels were gathered about the place. Had it been possible, the prince of darkness with his apostate army would have kept forever sealed the tomb and held the Son of God. But ladies and gentlemen, the story does not end there, amen? This is not the end of the story, amen? The Bible says in Matthew 28, verses 1 and 2, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it my friends Jesus has risen from the dead hallelujah praise be to the Lord Jesus has risen from the dead Christos Aneste as the people in the time the time of Jesus would shout and say Jesus has risen from the dead. Praise be to God. When the ultimate enemy, the death grabbed Jesus by its heels, death could not keep him in the grave. The great stone, the Roman seal, the Roman guards, even the unseen watchers, the host of evil angels, and the prince of darkness himself could not keep the tomb sealed. Nothing, again, nothing was able to keep Jesus in the grave. Jesus says in Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, and the word of the Lord says, I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades of the death. When total darkness surrounded Jesus, Jesus came to life right at the crack of dawn. In that dark, grim light, night, Jesus broke the chain of death and came to life. O death, as the Bible says, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Praise God that he overcame the power of death, the ultimate darkness. Praise God for his resurrecting power. Praise God that he is alive. And because of his resurrection, we have the greatest hope that in the glorious morning, we will be delivered from this world that is filled with so much darkness. From the beginning of time, Satan brought so much pain and agony upon this world. From the beginning of time, Satan has filled the world with so much sadness and turmoil. From the beginning of time, Satan, our enemy, has brought trouble and suffering upon this world. 
From the beginning of time, our enemy has brought tears and tears of sadness, tears of bitterness, tears of anger, and tears of loneliness upon this world. But all the pain, agony, sadness, turmoil, trouble, suffering, crying, struggle, stress, and death will be no more. On that morning when Christ bursts out of the darkness into the clouds of glory, so my friends, what kind of darkness are you experiencing right now? I believe each of us have gone through, are going through, or will go through all kinds of challenges and difficulties in our lives. But praise be to God that we don't need to go through any of these troubles and difficulties forever. Amen? All the darkness that you experience in your life will one day, and again one day, will come to an end. So I ask you, and I want us to encourage one another to, don't, to not lose hope. Please don't be discouraged. Instead, be encouraged. Have courage, because when darkness surrounds you, bright, glorious morning will come. Amen? The late Elder Paul Herbert Eldridge served in Japan as a missionary for 20 years and later became the president of the Far Eastern Division of the General Conference in Singapore. Now, during the World War II, Pastor Eldridge and his family spent three years in an internment camp in Philippines, which was set up by the Japanese government, the military. And looking back on that dreadful time, which he spent at the internment camp, Pastor Eldridge once said, and I quote, at that time, many Americans, including all the missionaries from the United States, were placed in this camp. The camp was surrounded by electric barbed wire and sheets of metal. Everyone in the camp suffered due to lack of food, and because of malnutrition, a person in the next room died. And then a pastor in the room across from me passed away. Every day, people were dying left and right. And I always wondered when my turn will come. One retired pastor brought his ration bowl of soup and a piece of bread and approached a young man in the same room. And he said to the young man, I am old and my time is very short. So I want young persons such as yourself to live to see the day when war will be no more. And we will be, and we will be free to go back home. After saying those words, he handed his food to, his young, to this young man. Food was indeed very scarce, and I myself was counting the days when my life will come to an end. However, one night... One night, we heard the sound of a plane. And that sound was not the sound of Japanese military plane. It was a sound of an American plane. A plane from my country. Even, even I knew the difference between a B-29 bomber and a Japanese fighter planes. As any children could look at any car and, and know if it's Toyota, Nissan, or Datsun, I knew that the sound of that plane, and in that darkness of the night, I heard not only the sound of the Japanese fighter plane, which often flew over our camp, but this time, it was the sound of an American plane. Then slowly, as the night turned into dawn, as I looked up into the sky from my window, I saw a plane with the mark of the star. And the plane flew over our camp again and again. And then within 20 minutes, there were tens of planes with the same mark on the wings. And I saw many parachutes opening up in midair. And as, I, as, as parachutes descended, the paratroopers quickly approached our camp, unlocked the gate, and freed us all. 
I was one step away from death. I lost considerable amount of weight, and I had very little strength to walk. But at that moment, the help came from the sky. Through this experience, my hope of the second coming of Jesus was strengthened, and I understood clearly that at the end of the time, the help will come from the sky, and Christ himself will deliver us from darkness. You know, our world is indeed becoming darker and darker because of sin. That's what sin does to this world, and that's what sin does to our hearts and our mind. But the Bible says in Romans chapter 13, verse 12, that the night is far spent, the day is at hand. The New International Version of the Bible says, the night is nearly over, the day is almost here. Praise the Lord that the night is almost over and the dawn of a new day is right around the corner. Amen. And as we look, or look around our world today, it is apparent that the world is becoming darker and darker and the darkest time of the world is fast approaching. But did you know that the darkest time of the night is right before the crack of dawn? Let me say it again. Did you know that the darkest time of the night is right before the crack of dawn? As the night falls deeper and deeper, it becomes that much closer to the morning light. When darkness surrounded the Israelites in that bondage of slavery, in the darkest of the night, God delivered them. When darkness surrounded the Israelites as the vast army of Pharaoh approached them from behind with the Red Sea in front of them, God made a way out of no way. When Jesus experienced the darkest night in the history of humankind and endured through all kinds of darkness and was bound in the tomb, he broke loose, he broke loose from the shackles of death in that bright resurrection morning. And because Jesus is alive, he will deliver us from the dark time of tribulation when on that Advent morning, he will come down in the clouds of glory to take us all back to his heavenly kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. When darkness surrounds us, let us never forget and always remember that as the psalmist says in Psalms 35, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So as I close, when you experience sadness and sorrow, just remember that joy cometh in the morning. When you experience hardship and pain, just remember that joy cometh in the morning. When you are burdened by the cares of your life and it's becoming unbearable, just hold on because joy cometh in the morning. When you are suffering with sickness and you feel the pain all over your body and even your doctor has given up on you, please remember that joy cometh in the morning when you're having difficult time with your loved ones and you are doing everything you can to mend the relationship, just hold on and remember that joy cometh in the morning. When your loved one betrays you and hurt you to the core, don't give up. Never give up. Because the Bible says joy cometh in the morning. When you're struggling with your life and try to make ends meet, just remember, joy cometh in the morning. When you're stressed out and depressed and disappointed with your life and you just want to quit, again, don't give up. Just remember and never forget, as the Bible says and promises that joy cometh in the morning. And when you are burdened by the guilt, tremendous guilt and hurt from your past, just remember God loves you. Ladies and gentlemen, God loves you. 
And he is waiting to take away your guilt and your sin. And remember that weeping may endure for the night, but joy, I say joy, cometh in the morning. When we look around us, everywhere we look, it is filled with darkness. The world is wicked. The world is evil. And darkness surrounds us all. But just remember, just remember that joy cometh in the morning. Because ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. So let us praise the Lord. Give thanksgiving unto the Lord. Let's glorify his name and shout and say, joy cometh in the morning. Amen? 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 May God bless us all. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you so much for your promises. May your word resonate in our hearts. And may we find hope in you through your holy word. We thank you and we praise your name. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. God bless you all.